Hey everyone, welcome back to my workshop and we're at it today again with another Xtool D1 video. And today we are going to talk about the honeycomb bed option and I'm going to talk about the custom enclosure I made for the laser that works with this bed. So let's get to it. Okay, so let's first talk about the tray and why you may, may want to use one. Uh, the purpose of the tray is to provide, first off, a very flat surface for your mater material to rest on uh, in the laser because you do want that to be a consistent level surface in relation to your laser head. Um, but secondly, it allows for air to move through because of, you know, as you see there, this is real thin uh, spring steel uh, honeycomb style webbing in there. That allows uh, air to pass through. And then also it really reduces the surface area of the, where your material is actually touching the surface. So as your laser cuts through, uh, it's going to hit that back material. And if there's, a, is a, if there's a void, an air gap there, it allows that beam to come through and any smoke and debris and, and the laser beam to come through without hitting and instantly reflecting back or trapping gases. And so that's really the purpose of the honeycomb is to provide a, a nice solid surface that then actually allows the pass through. Uh, the, the, if you were to use just a uh, piece of sheet metal, uh, you would be trapping the gases and you would have a constant kind of reflection off of that back onto your material, which then can cause overburn on the backside of your items instead of having a clean cut top and bottom. Uh, now there are some issues with how you use this that can make it less effective. And so that's why I want to talk about the enclosure I also made. Uh, to hopefully maximize the effectiveness of this bed. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that enclosure. We'll get this installed in it and uh, talk about a little bit about the features of this bed and that enclosure. All right, so the purpose of the enclosure is to help provide a better, a, a safer environment for us to use the laser. If you're doing a lot of cutting and or even engraving on material that is gonna burn away, there's going to be smoke and debris that can then circulate in the room uh, or the structure that you're in. Uh, now, if you're in an open air environment, maybe such as in this shop, this garage, where you can open up doors, um, that's great because you can get airflow through and maybe you don't need one of these. Uh, but here, it's there's problems with that because in the middle of winter, I'm not going to be opening up my windows and doors, letting all that cold air in. Uh, and I want to be able to use this laser in my basement shop where I don't have to come out here all the time to use my larger laser. And so I built an enclosure so that it keeps the, the fumes and any debris kind of contained in the box. And then as we'll look closer, there's a fan and then a four inch pipe hose, flexible hose that's gonna go out to a vent outside. So a few things to keep in consideration with that. Um, you do wanna have access to the laser um, and easy, but also be able to seal it back down. So I've got this lid on here uh, and then Speaking of extracting those fumes, you have to have the airflow. So we're going to talk a little bit about how I designed this and how I hope it'll work. Um, I, I put some thought into this, but it's all theoretical until we actually put it into practice. So let's take a closer look at some of those features. The overall dimensions of this machine are roughly 25 wide, so about 24 wide interior. It's about 26 deep. And then roughly at its highest point, it's about 13 and a half inches tall. Okay, so as I said, I've got this lid on here and I wanted to be able to see down it. So I have uh, some laser rated uh, plexiglass uh, and then it just simply hinges open. And this gives me pretty much full access to the laser. Uh, now, to talk a little bit about the airflow, I have these vents in on the front uh, and they split in the middle and I have this other guard in here that I can move up and down or even part way through. Uh, and my thought process there is that you really want to think about the airflow based on where your smoke is going to be generated. If you're engraving but not cutting through, the smoke and debris is really going to be coming more on top. And so you want the airflow to be uh, moving across the top of your material and your bed to get pulled away. But if you're cutting through, uh, hopefully you're cutting through cleanly and you're going to have more of that smoke then coming down through the bottom. So I wanted to be able to change the direction of the airflow to be more favoring underneath the bed so that it pulls that smoke out from underneath the uh, honeycomb bed and out. And so 
I'll show you a little closer and, uh, as we look through this. I actually have the exhaust port split between top and bottom. So it is pulling from both sides, but I can direct more of the airflow from underneath or on top as needed. Off to the side, you see I also have um, some options for things I can move up and down. And this does two things for me. It allows me to shift the airflow uh, if I need to, to come across from one side. And it would be more likely that I'd come across from this side to there for my fan. But it also allows me to have pass through. So if I have a larger object, but I still want to contain the smoke, I can lift these up, uh, put my piece in there, and it, it comes right straight across to the surface of the uh, honeycomb bed to where it's level. And I can still use this in the enclosure with a larger item. Um, now for my use, I just went with a little over 12 inches because I figured I would be working on boards or balsa wood or things that would well fit inside there. If it is bigger than that, I'm still going to want to pull the laser out. So that's one of the other uh, design features I wanted in this. I wanted it not to be really hard fixed into this enclosure. So I can disconnect the USB and the power, disconnect my air assist, and this whole thing will lift out easily. All right, so as you can see, I have lighting in back here, but when it's uh, closed, I wanted to make sure I lit up the whole surface. So I've also lined the top of this lid with some LED lights. And then on the bottom, I have just a little limit switch that uh, when it, this piece comes in contact, it lights up the top row. I didn't want to be blinded by those every time I went to open this, so that's why I have it set for those to come on just when this top lid comes down, and then they turn off when I flip up. The air assist, I had to think about a few times on how I wanted to route it in here. And since most of my controls are going to be over on this side, I've decided let's just bring it in here. And it has it's loose enough that I can slide it around a little bit, but it has just enough um, flex and length in there that it, it does go to the full extent without stretching too far and without dipping down too much when it's all the way back in the corner. I'm using now let's take this front panel off and show you how I can access other things and get the honeycomb panel in. So it's just held in by four machine screws. And I opted to do this so that I could have easier access underneath um, if I needed to also pull the honeycomb table out to engrave something deeper or use the rotary, I could. So four screws, this slides off. And now I have access to this to clean out. This is the piece of sheet metal that comes with the honeycomb table. So I just have it sitting down here as kind of a catch-all as well. But if you were using the honeycomb on just a flat surface, you would put this on the bottom for your spoil board protection and then your honeycomb on top of that. All right, to install the honeycomb tray, you just simply slide it down on these rails. And it fits in there. Now one thing that I, uh, if I rebuilt this, I would actually have this go back just a little bit further. As it is, it's, uh, it, it's just barely far enough for this head to reach the back end of it. So uh, that causes a little bit of issue if you're trying to use the marks on here for alignment, but that's not necessarily part of my workflow. So, but just something I thought I'd note that I would maybe do different. So as you can see, uh, the, the bed sits on two type side rails and then is level with the base across so that I can use my pass through and that the feet are on there. And then it is deep enough that I can put the rotary in underneath by just sliding this out, use that, slide it back in as needed. And then I have ample access to clean out anything underneath here and ample uh, area for airflow to go underneath. Okay, so as I mentioned, I've got the cables coming out on this side. I've got the fan. I've got the air assist pump. Uh, right now it's just sitting in back. Uh, and then to control all this, then I wanted to be able to have independent control of various things. So I picked up this trip light multi-switched um, power strip. And so if I need to turn the fan on, I just hit that switch. That turns the fan on, which will then start moving air out of this. If I need to turn the air assist on, I have that on a separate switch. That turns the pump on. As you can hear, there's air coming out of the air assist now. Uh, and then if I needed to, I could switch off the LEDs here. 
and then uh, the overall laser controller as well. All right, so we've got everything set up. We're going to close the lid. Our material's ready. We've got our fan turning on. Obviously, it's just going to vent inside the shop, but that's okay. I'm going to leave the air assist off while it's doing the engraving because I don't want it to cause any extra overburn. But once the cutting portion starts, we'll hit that switch to turn that on. So let's go ahead and hit start and watch the job go. Okay, the job has completed. Open this up. Pop this out. Cut through cleanly. So as you can see on the back, there's no markings. On the front with the air assist, there's no markings. Uh, we have our engraving and our cut. Same thing on here. There's no, there's no flashback. There's no burn. So. That is where the honeycomb bed or something similar that allows air movement through it, allows those things to escape can help out. All right, so I ran a number of just quick test cuts on this fresh board uh, to try to show what's going to eventually happen. So you'll see in here where the file cut through, you can kind of see just this very, very start of some residue. So over time, as you use this more, that's going to collect on there. And what you want to do is eventually in some type of routine, you're gonna to want to clean that off. Because as that builds up, you get this residue and this gumminess. Uh, when the laser comes through and starts hitting that more and more, that then starts flashing and re-vaporizing, re and that can increase staining and could eventually lose, uh, inc uh, cause some issues where you could get some, some extra burning, uh, almost to the point where you could uh, have a bit of a fire hazard. Uh, it's fairly easy to clean. You can use uh, just some uh, Dawn Power Wash or Simple Green mixture. Just kind of spray it on, let it soak for a little bit, and then rinse it off. That's going to get most of that off. Um, the, you want to be careful. You can scrub this a little bit, but you don't want to dent this. You don't want to bend it because then you're going to start having a less smooth, flat surface. But that's just something to watch out for with this is that there is uh, some maintenance involved. So I hope that is a nice overview of both the honeycomb bed, whether it's in an, in an enclosure or not, as well as what I did to build my enclosure and how some of the features I looked into it. Um, I hope this inspires you when you're looking to build yours. Uh, I'm not necessarily gonna be making kits of these. Um, it's just quite difficult to process and ship uh, the items in here. Uh, but if anybody has questions uh, more about dimensions and uh, the build, uh, please leave a comment down below. I'd love to uh, try to help you out as best I can. And so uh, I now am excited to start using this more, get into some more projects. Um, want to show people, uh, maybe inspire people on how to do a few things and get started with it. So um, stay tuned. There'll be more of these coming. And uh, in the meantime, if you have any questions, uh, all the information is down below. Thanks.